This is Andy Pilwell for Boxing News. I'm joined by Frank Warren here in Morecambe. Frank, how are you? Good to see you as always. I'm good, I'm good. I'm, I'm enjoying myself. We're in a, it's not a sunny Morecambe at the moment, but it's not sunny anywhere in the UK. All the rain we keep getting. But I'm delighted to be here with Tyson, who looks so well in such, you know, so, so well mentally and physically. It's brilliant. Frank, I know obviously you're going to have a lot of fights over the summer, you're going to be travelling out to Saudi Arabia, but any summer holidays plans for yourself for some nicer weather? I'll have a break during the summer, no doubt about that, but this is a break for me because I enjoy it. This is like being on, I'm in holiday, I'm in Morecambe. <laughs> um, Frank, talk to me, Fury Usyk, you've seen your man today, he's looking well, he's looking sharp. How excited are you for May 18th now? I'm very excited because I just feel sometimes out of bed comes good, he had that cut, but to be honest, you know, it was an awful cut, but he was... It was at the end of his sparring, so he got all that sparring under his belt. And remember, he's only had one fight in 18 months or, or more. Maybe not, might be two, two years now. And um, obviously with a time to, to heal up, he was peaking. He's taken that time. He's now, if you look at him now, he can fight tomorrow. He's in such good nick. So the pro if it's a problem, it's maintaining the level he's at so that he's working towards getting to a peak physical and mental situation by the 18th and I think he'll do that and I think we're going to see a vintage vintage performance from him. You said there you think you'll see a vintage performance. How do you expect to see Tyson approach this fight? Does he become aggressive? Does he look to break Usyk down to the body? I know you've mentioned it a few times I mean, the build-up to this. Do you think that's the key for Tyson hurt the body of Alexander Usyk? I think Tyson, on, as soon as that first bell goes, he will just do what he's got in his head. He's, he's adaptable. He's got plan A, he's got plan B, and he's got a plan C. And he will use whatever it takes to get for it and do it. Well, see, it'd be interesting to see what Usyk does. You know, what does he do? How does, how's he going to handle Tyson Fury? How's he going to try and handle him? So it's how Tyson responds to that. You know, is he going to go out and take the centre of the ring? Is he going to dominate and push him back or not? We will see. He's the bigger man, he's got the better reach. But then again, the bigger man with a better reach in AJ couldn't do it. Interesting, you mentioned there Anthony Joshua, it's going to be my next question. Eddie Hearn said it on a few occasions that depending on how May 18th plays out, whatever Turkey LL will shake, once he'll end up getting, and I know there's a rematch clause in place, but if he was to say, no, we've seen Fury Usyk once, I'd rather see, say, Fury Joshua, do you think that's a realistic possibility? Who knows what's going to happen, we'll see. At the end of the day, it's up to the satisfying the loser of the fight. And if Usyk is the loser, it's up to satisfying him that he'll step aside. It's a big if, it's all ifs. At the moment, you can only deal with what you're contracted to deal with. Anton Joshua is saying that he only feels he's got a couple of years left in the ring. What are your thoughts on that? Well, if that's how he feels, that's how it feels. If, you're not, if you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's when you start getting really hurt. And, you know, a couple of years, what's that, another four fights? That's a long time, four fights. No, we've got that September card being mentioned for Wembley as well. Turkey. I'll show you again the man behind that. Anthony Joshua has mentioned boxing in September. Joseph Parker's called him out this morning. Frank, how fantastic of a fight could that be if we saw AJ and Joseph Parker? It's a good fight, there's no doubt about that. But, you know, we've got a long way to go yet before we, uh, we announce that. When do we start getting those announcements? When it's all completed, when the card's completed and all the contracts are signed. Frank Bawatsi Yard, what is the latest with that? Um, we're still um, talk, trying at the moment to get it over the line, so we, we, it'll have a deadline on it, and if we can't do it, we'll move on and make something else. What can you tell me in terms of what has been the hold-up? Joshua Boatze tweeted on the back of, I think it was when you did a few interviews, including with myself, where he said he hadn't received anything. This was about a week ago, so I imagine things have progressed we, since then. We, we, we can't send anything until we agree terms with... And so you can't, I can't just send a contract and there's nothing on the other side. We've agreed the terms. In fact, uh, Josh texted me last night, asked me what's happening, which was a bit of a bolt out of the blue for me, but that came in. Uh, but the bottom line is, until uh, we get the situation sorted out with what Anthony wants to do, we're, uh, we can't move any forward. How confident are you you feel like that one can get over the line? And if it doesn't... How long can you wait until you have to start planning for Anthony's future? Oh, we're not going to wait long. I mean, we're going to have to do it. We can't keep, you know, we're either going to do it or we're not going to do it. And that's, that's going to be him and his team's choice. So we're waiting for an announcement on the five versus five, Frank. Everybody set, everybody ready on your behalf now? We're all ready to go and we'll be announcing it on uh, the 15th. So you ain't got a long wait now, have you? Next week.
we ain't got long to wait. I'm going to ask her. I did an interview with Dan Raphael, um, and he said that Dubois Hergovic and Walder Zhang will be two of those fights on that card. Dubois Hergovic for potentially a vacant IBF, depending on the game. For your Usyk situation, IBF, if they stick to their stance. Dubois Hergovic for IBF sound good? We'll find out on the 15th. <laughs> um, one final one. David Adelaide, David Adelaide, what's the latest with him? So Dave, because he's a bit confused as to why he hasn't had that fight secured yet. Um, I believe that's going to happen. I believe it happened in the summer. He had an injury. As you know, he had, he had the fight and he had a bit of an injury. But I, I believe that fight will be done and we'll be announcing that fairly soon. Squeeze one more, Frank, before we pack this up. Carl Froch um, doesn't seem to be your best mate at this moment in time. It's not about best mate. It's about people being pig ignorant. And Pete is somebody who is, you know, the things he's, I mean, I've seen that video, someone showed it to me, and I can't believe you could be so disrespectful to somebody's culture, you know, to another country's culture when you're in that part of the world and, and so forth. It's very, very disrespectful, you know, and, but that's him, he's a plank of wood. Um, you know, obviously he's getting dropped out everywhere and he's got to flog that, flog his, uh, was it his podcast? That's what he's doing and uh, he's doing it in a very, very bad way at the moment and what he did is totally... It, you know, it's, I can't tell you how disrespectful it is. Me, I, I, I'm going to tell you something. You want to talk about, I've been there before. When I went to the Yemen, when I went there with Nassim Hamid, the sportsmen, so I'm going to get off the plane, the sportsmen, are, so that, that is the culture. They hold my hand. And they do that for, as a sign of respect. And, a, and, and where it's a respect for the person or what they're bringing or what they're trying to help to do, to help make, that's it. Or friendship. No problem with me. I'm I'm cool with cool with absolutely cool with that because you know what? I'm old enough and even if I was his age, I'm sensible enough and respectful enough of other people to know and to how to treat things. Not to be not to be rude, disrespectful and basically being a prick. But that's what he is. Frank, how excited are you now then for this run of shows on the horizon? Excitement. I'm very, very excited. I'm just going to add one thing before off of that. If that, if I'd have said that, what would Boxing News have done about that? What would you have said? What would what questions you'd be asking me? Would you be asking to cancel me? Would you be saying he shouldn't be on TV? He shouldn't be doing this. Is disgusting what he's being said. Would that? Would you be saying that? We'd have to start raising those questions. What background do you come from? I'm Indian, I'm Sikh. Oh, you're Sikh. Okay, right. Sorry, I didn't write. Right, so you're Sikh. But you understand your your culture, and you're in the UK, and you accept our culture as well. Yeah, and we respect your culture. And that's what, what the world is supposed to be about. Not pricks like him. Anyway, the next question was what? The run of shows, Frank. Your excitement for these shows. We've got some fabulous shows, some great shows in Saudi, uh, some brilliant shows in the UK, and uh, I'm... Uh, I'm as happy as you can be, mate. I'm as happy as you can be. Potentially a new IBF heavyweight world champion on June the 1st. <laughs> you know more than I do. What do I know?